Hello class, on this video you will be learning about how to do uh, sequences and series, um, specifically uh, regarding the series part. Last week we have talked about recursive formulas and the explicit formula in previous week uh, in which it allows us to determine the specific term in which what we're looking for, 17th term, the 19th term of the sequence, and explicit formula to find it, that kind of thing. The series is a little bit more elaborate than that, and today we're going to be talking about arithmetic series in which it basically means it's going to add up all the numbers in prior to it. So, if we take a look at this slide, we should be familiar with the concept of arithmetic sequences and geometric sequence of the nth term, the explicit formulas, if you will. And then, using these two equations, we need to be able to solve for what we call the series. So, consider the, sum, consider the following. Let's say that I'm looking for the sum of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, all the way down to n is equal to 100. So on the table chart right here, we can figure out that the sequence involves an adding 2, which is my common difference. And it's going to consistently add all the way down to n is equal to 100. So first of all, can we continue down this list and then find out what when n is 100, what my a sub n is going to be. So when a sub 100, what's the value? The, the formula is a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. In this particular case, the first term will be 1 plus the common difference of 2 times 100 minus 1, which is 99, which gives you 1 plus 198, which gives you 199. So I want to add up all of these numbers before, not 199. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus 13, all the way down to 199. Now you can kind of assume that we are not literally going to go to our calculator and type in a bunch of these different numbers to really get our answers. There's really a quick and easy way that I want you to remember this. What is the first number plus the last number? It's 200. And the number right before that, which you should subtract 2 from it, it should be 197, correct? So if you're, if you're going to add 3 and 197, what do we get? Another 200. 5 plus 195 gives you another 200, and you can see that the pattern is that when you add the first and the last number together, it gives you the consistent numbers in which if you're supposedly adding the subsequent terms, like the second to the second number to the second to the last number, third number to third to the last number, and they all end up being 200. And how many of these 200 do you get? Well, if there are 100 numbers in total from 1 to 199, because that's your n number, we're talking about pairs. So we're talking about grouping the first and the last one together. That gives you one pair. How many pairs do we have out of 100? Well, imagine I have 100 students, and I tell you guys to get in the, get in the group of two, find a partner, and work on this. I'm going to have 50 groups. How do I know that? It's because I'm going to divide that by 2. So if I take this 200 and multiply it by 50, because that's how many partners, that's how many groups of 200 I'm going to get, my final answer is going to be 10,000. And if you were crazy enough to actually type this up all the way down to 199 and you're going to add up all those numbers, you will end up with 10,000 for your total sum. So here's the formula that I want you guys to remember. Now, instead of really just memorizing this formula, think about what, this, think about what we just did here. We added the first and the last number together. That is this right here, a sub 1 plus a sub n. And that gave us 200, right? Now this n divided by 2, I want you to write it like this because that might be a little bit helpful. The n divided by 2, what was that? That was the amount of pairs, the number of pairs of the, uh, the numbers that we had because we had 1 plus uh, 199, 3 plus 197, 5 plus 195. And we found out that these were the number of pairs. Like, this is one pair, two pair, three pair that gave us 200. 
And the easy way to figure that is we did 100 numbers, because that's 100 numbers in total, and we simply divided by 2. So that was 50. And we, we took this and we found those 50 pairs and we are going to multiply them. That's what this formula is about. So this is a sum of what we call a part. This is a formula for what we call a partial sum. It's called a partial sum is because we are only going from n is equal to 1, n is equal to 100. We're only taking a portion of the sequences because it goes infinitely down this way. We're taking a portion of the sequence and we're taking some of it, hence the word partial. Okay? So using the formula, let's take a look at this. So fill the table below for what value of n will reach a, uh, 100. We don't really need to do that. Let's say I ask you to find the partial sum of the sequence, sequence or series. So when I say series, what's the difference of sequence? Sequence is just the numbers. Series is the sum. That's what it means to be um, like, let's find the series of the 2 through 100. That's what, that's what it basically comes down to. Okay. So if you take a look at this example, the formula is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So here, what we want to do is now we want to look for the nth value. I have the last number, which is 100, and I have the first number, which is 2. So 2 plus 100. But how long would it reach, how, how long would it take for us to reach from 2 to all the way down to 100? Well, we have to use our explicit formula for that, and that's why I taught you guys explicit formula the past two weeks. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus common difference and minus 1. The common difference here is you get out as 2. So 100 equals 2 plus 2 times n minus 1. 2 plus 2n minus 2, these two cancels out, and you'll be able to figure out that n is equal to 50, because if you divide both sides by 2, you get a 50. So now that I can plug it in here, say 25 times 2 plus 100, because 50 divided by 2. And so that's going to be 102 times 25, which I should use my calculator for it. 102 times 25 gives me final answers to be 2,550. That is going to be my series for these numbers. Pause the video and please try out this problem in which you're supposed to be solving for n and you have to add up all the numbers all the way down to 180. Okay, assuming that you have the, um, the nth value, I'm going to go over this question. First, let's find out the n. Use the general explicit formula, d times n minus 1. The common difference here is plus 7. So 180, that's my last term, plus the first term, 12, plus 7 times n minus 1. 12 plus 7n minus 7. These two would make it 5. Subtract 5 on both sides. And so I can divide both sides by 7 at this case, which gives me 25 is equal to n. Okay? So now that I have my nth value, I'm going to plug it in to my formula. Uh, the summation series is equal to n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. The summation is 25 divided by 2 times 12 plus 180. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, okay, Mr. Kim, if I have 25 over 2, that's a decimal value. Doesn't that mean that it's not going to happen because I get these to be integer values? You're right, but because this number is too big, which this makes it 192, even though 25 divided by 2 is 12.5, uh, this times this actually gives you an integer number. So don't panic. Just simply type it in your calculator, and you should get 2400 for your final answer, and that's the sum. Okay, so these are the series series questions that I would I would like you to try. You will see questions in which I'm going to give you very similar questions. Um, we're not going to go over the summation notation that will be for tomorrow, uh, but please expect questions like this to do for today. Okay, thank you and have a good day.